This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show are the AIO Logs projects, Shifter and Handbrake. Now, I have them displayed here like they're a set, but they are actually independently sold. You have the Shifter for $165. It's a sequential Shifter, and you have the Handbrake. It's also $165, and you can see they are very similar, and they share a lot of common parts, but they are totally separate and unique. Now, one of the things that I really like like when I just first look at these shifter and handbrake, I like their compact design. They are small, but they are very robust. When you pick them up in your hand, they are heavy, they are solid, they are mostly made of metal, and they are very impressive despite their size. Inside of it, they do have a ball bearing to handle all the movement action. And like I said, they're mostly made of metal and they are extremely heavy duty little shifters. On the shifter itself, you're looking at about three kilograms, three kilograms of pressure. You can see it's a significant amount of pressure to make it throw either up or down shift. So that's something that makes them also very heavy duty. And it also means that you're gonna need a pretty substantial rig when it comes to mounting. We're gonna talk more about the mounting options when we move forward. On the handbrake, you're looking at four kilograms of pressure during its throw. So again, you can see the amount of pressure it's taking for me to hold this thing firmly down on the ground. It is substantial. They are USB standalone devices, so each one will plug in via its own USB cable to your PC computer. And they actually are technically compatible if you use Drive Hub and you want to use them on an Xbox or a PlayStation, you can use them via that method as well. Another nice feature about the AIO Logs shifter or handbrake is the fact that they come with multiple mounting options. You've got the clamp-on method, you've got the bracket to fit it to 80-20 profile, in addition to that you've got the direct bolt-on mount as well. Pretty spectacular in one shifter. And then on top of that, it has adjustable lighting. I mean, what is complete without RGB in 2020, right? So you do have adjustable lighting effects inside of the shifter, and that's pretty cool as well. So when you spend $165, what do you actually get? Well, first, take your pick, shifter or handbrake. Again, they're each $165. With that, you get the base unit. Again, mostly made of metal, ball bearing action, super robust, super heavy duty. It has a, steer a shaft to hold the knob, whether you're talking about the handbrake or the shifter, they both come with a slightly different knob, and I'll go over those dimensions in a moment as well. It also comes with a clamp, which will bolt on or can be removed from the unit. It comes with little rubber gaskets to give it a really good firm fitting on a desktop type uh, mounting option and prevent it from doing any scratching. And then on top of that you get the 80-20 profile mount. So a lot included for that $165. In addition to that, they do come with their own USB cable so you're not going to have to look for wiring. Now right out of the box, before I even get it on my rig or even start using it in sim, I was already quite impressed by, again, that substantial, robust, little box. It's such a nice compact design. And again, it makes it that much easier to install onto whatever you're putting it on. So let's talk about the overall dimensions of the parts of both the shifter and handbrake by AIO Logs. Starting off with the main base, which is four and a half inches or 115 millimeters long by two and a half inches or 64 millimeters wide, and then it is two inches or 54 millimeters tall. When mounted with the desk clamp, that will extend an additional 5.1 inches or 130 millimeters below the mounting deck. And it will clamp onto something as much as 1.18 inches or 30 millimeters thick. The shifter handle is 2.4 inches or 60 millimeters tall, and one and a quarter inches or 36 millimeters in diameter. The shifter handle extends four and three quarter inches or 120 millimeters above the top of the base. The brake handle is nearly four inches or 100 millimeters tall and 1.1 inch or 28 millimeters in diameter. The brake handle extends 6.3 inches or 160 millimeters tall over the base. One of the best features of the AIO Logs shifter or handbrake is actually the mounting options. I mean, almost any shifter or handbrake you're going to get actually has really good mounting options, 
but they are exceptional when it comes to this shifter and handbrake. First of all, the hand, the, the clamp itself is very heavy duty. As far as clamps go, this is one of the firmest grips, one of the strongest mechanisms. And again, it does stick down about five inches, but it's still a pretty compact design. It's not gonna get in the way in too much. The other option being that profile mount. You can use this in a horizontal, horizontal or a vertical position, mounting it to, it's designed for 80-20, so you'd be able to use two of these holes in the slot and groove and be able to mount it like that. It's really simple, you take two bolts off the side, you bolt this with its hardware right back to it, and it's very simple and amazingly solid considering even in the vertical position, it's just kind of hanging up there in the air, but it's rock solid. The extra rubber grips, whether you're mounting it with the M5 hardware on the bottom, these bolts are 40 millimeters apart, coincidentally. They have this at 40 millimeters, but you have a lot of options to, to do there. Um, but it gives it a really nice, firm grip, and again, these gaskets prevent it from gouging the desktop or anything that you do mount it to. It's quick and easy, like it's just two bolts to put this mount right back into it. Put a bolt there, put a bolt there, clamp it in up to 1.18 inches thick or 30 millimeters, and it is a rock solid clamp. So I'm really impressed with the mounting options, and I'm also impressed that it comes with all those options and everything you need to do that just like that. Now for me, I went with the 80-20 profile mount. What I actually wanted to do was mount them side by side. I wanted them at a little bit of an angle on my rig, and I was able to do that with one piece of profile tubing. I bolted that down to my shifter plate, and then I was able to mount each of these in the vertical position onto that, and they were firm, they were rock solid, and they were pretty much exactly where I needed them to be on my rig. And again, with this clamp, it's very easy to mount it in either position, and you actually could just bolt it to just about anything. Couple wood screws into a piece of plywood or into a two by four, it's bolted in. Couple of bolts through a piece of tubing, and it's on. By any means necessary, this mount should get it on just about any rig that I could possibly think of somehow some way. Now before we get to driving, there's still a few other things. There is a calibration button, which would be most applicable on the handbrake. And if you need to recalibrate it, you, there is a procedure. They show it in the instructions. You press the button, you move the thing, you press the button again. Mine worked great out of the box, didn't need to mess without any of that. In addition to that, RGB. We're in the RGB world. Uh, inside of each one of these is a little light. So between inside, it'll shine a light through this plastic top cover and it looks kind of cool in the dark. You can pick any color. You just download their little color picker. It's a simple piece of software. You pick a color and your shifter and handbrake will glow in those colors. Kind of cool. And I did like being able to make my sim pick colors glow, make it match your rig or any lighting that you do have in your room. Another little extra specialty. So beyond that, all you have to do is fire up your sim, calibrate your sequential shifter, calibrate your handbrake, and get out on track and see how it runs. Now, when it comes down to driving these on track, that is what is most critical. Now, they are heavy duty. Again, three kilograms of pressure to move that shifter, four kilograms of pressure to move that handbrake, and for that, you're gonna need a solid mounting option. So do make sure that you put some energy into getting these mounted firmly, but when you do, and you get on track, let's start with the shifter. Despite how much power it takes to activate the shifter, and it's not too much, it's the kind that's heavy duty, but, the movement is so smooth. When you consider the amount of pressure it takes, the action is so smooth. It is so, there is no hint of any kind of movement or wiggle other than the shifting direction. It's smooth and you're overcoming like a ball bearing on a spring. And as soon as that thing is activated, it clicks and it clicks strong. You can feel it every single shift. It's strong enough that you're not gonna get any miss shifts whatsoever. You need to shift with enough intention. It's not gonna be a, ooh, I reached down too hard and hit the shifter and got a gear. You are gonna have to click for every single gear change. You can feel it, you can hear it. It's a really positive click and it gives confidence when out on the track. The handle on the shifter is a very comfortable aluminum knob. It's got a grippy section in the middle and a nice comfortable round top and it feels comfortable in my hand whether I'm gripping it or just he hitting it with the heel of my hand. 
The shifter in each direction has about one inch or 25 millimeters of travel front or back or up or down shift. Now I could go on and on and on about driving and how sequential shifters versus H pattern shifters versus, versus paddle shifters, but the bottom line is whatever kind of shifter you like is the kind of shifter that you should use. We're trying to match that immersion level, the kind of things we need. But the other thing that really impressed me when it came to this shifter was the way the action happened. Just having that really firm movement, making it so that I just never had a misshift. I, I mean, this thing feels like a real mechanism. It's not plasticky, it's not toyish, it's not slappy slappy. It is a firm, positive shift, and honestly, the kind of feeling, the kind of action that I'd expect from a much more expensive shifter. Now, moving on to the handbrake. Now, I am not a rally pro. I am not a drifting master. So for me, the handbrake is always that extra bonus accessory when it comes to my sim rig. And it's not something that I'm super good at using, but when I do find myself in the dirt, when I do find myself in a car that can utilize the handbrake, it is a lot of fun to add your sim rig. And again, at $165, you're not breaking the bank to do so. Now, same type of mechanism, same kind of action. And at four kilograms of movement, it gives you a lot of variation between the beginning of the movement and the end of the movement. And that way, if you just need a little bit, it's really easy to get that kind of action on it because of the amount of pressure you're fighting. It's not a slappy handbrake where you're just gonna grab it and it's just sort of the minute you touch it, you're gonna go to full throw, like a toy type handbrake. No, 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 no. This is gonna take some real oomph. Now, despite all the pressure it takes, despite this little tiny compact design, there's no play. There's, I mean, there is zero play. There is zero movement other than the movement towards moving the handbrake into full throw. That is the only. And with that, there's no noises. There's no popping, grinding. It is butter, butter smooth moving on that ball bearing action. It's also strong enough that you could actually rest your hand on the handbrake while driving. And with that, you're still not going to have enough pressure to move it. So you'll see no blinking of the brake until you actually start to move the lever. The total travel of the handbrake is about three inches or 76 millimeters of travel. And with the combination of that pressure, a combination of that smoothness and a combination of those three inches of travel equal the ability to delicately use that handbrake when you need it or give it full throw when you really wanted it as well. And it was easy to know when you're doing any variation between the two. It made dirt driving more lively, more action packed, and a lot more realistic. Now overall, with how impressed I am with the AIO Logs Project Shifter and Handbrake, I could go on and on and on about driving with them, but really we've kind of covered all of the main aspects. We've talked about the things that are most important, the mounting options, the robustness, the solidness, the smoothness, the action on them, all of those things. But just to be perfectly clear, let's go ahead and break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, and that being that ultra compact design. Very affordable. Very heavy duty. Shifter specific, heavy indentation, no missed shifts. Shifter specific, throw distance is perfect for me, upshift and downshift. Handbrake specific, heavy spring, good modulation. Multiple mounting options. Heavy duty clamp. Adjustable lighting. Gotta have RGB. Metal handle feels good in my hand, both shifter and handbrake. Plug and play. 
feels like it's gonna last forever. Very robust. And now on to the not so good. And I did have to dig deep just to find a few things to add to the list and almost all of them could be overcome. Starting off with the handbrake handle could actually be a little bit taller. Shifter rod loosened while driving. I solved this by using a little bit of Loctite and really, really tightening it down firmly. Never happened again. Mounting holes could match a traditional pattern. Logitech, Fanatic, Thrustmaster. And now on to the bottom line. I am so impressed with the AIO Logs Project Shifter Ant Handbrake. They are really impressive and at their price, it's re really rather amazing. These are not toy shifters. They feel heavy, their action is even heavier, and it's a pleasure driving with them. Now, again, shifters, handbrakes, they're not one of those everybody needs them. They're for somebody looking for a particular extra thing. At this price point, they come in with feeling of a lot much, 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 much more expensive shifter and handbrake set. So you could spend more money and get a shifter or handbrake that has a lot less action, a lot less realism, and a lot less heavy duty, robust feel about it. So that is something that just blew my mind. I'm very impressed. I, I honestly, I'm not encouraging them to raise their price, but to me, it almost seems like they should be more expensive. Now they do sell these in batches. So if you wanted to go order them right now, either one at $165, the next batch ship April 20th, and they're gonna keep doing that kind of rollout. So you'll pre-order, but April 20th is just a little bit over a month away, a month and a week away. So it's not too long of a wait, but it's well worth the wait for what you get with these amazing shifter and handbrakes. The other thing that I really liked, now for me, I really do honestly use my paddle shifters more than the shifter, but there are certain moments where the certain type of car or situation calls for using a sequential and it's nice to have. But since it's not an always feature, that extra compact design is even more important to me because it means it's not taking over my entire rig. Now, one of the things I said on the not so good list was that the shifter, hand, the handbrake handle could be taller. And I say that mostly for the real hardcore rally and drift guys who expect a handbrake to be about this tall. So it is a little small on that department, but at three inches of travel, I think that's a good amount of travel and it's okay. And again, for me, it's not an always. So at this size, that compact design, it doesn't take over my rig. It looks really awesome on the rig. It gives me all the kind of effects that I need to be happy with a shifter or a handbrake or even better, the pair. So it's been my absolute pleasure to review these. They, I mean, I, again, I can't really, I mean, let's, our, the shifter rod, yes, I, this loosened up because I tend to twist when I pull on the, put some Loctite on the threads, never happened again. And then the only other negative aspect were that the mounting holes at 40 millimeters are unique to this shifter and handbrake. So it's not gonna line up with your Logitech, your Fanatic, or your Thrustmaster shifter mounts on an existing rig. So it means you might need to bust out on the drill, but it does come with the mount. So with the mount, you might have a chance to mount it to your rig some other way. There's always a will. Wherever there's a will, there's a way. And it was no problem for me to get it mounted on with a stick of profile bolted to my rig. It worked that simple. So the glowing review, this is not a paid review. I'm just that impressed with these, these parts. I mean, they're really cool. They look cool. They're really solid. They should last forever. They feel like they're going to last forever. So you can check them out for yourself. They are at aiologs.net or at shop.aiologs.net forward slash shifter or handbrake. So I hope that tells you everything you need to know about this incredible shifter, handbrake, or combo. Even better if you get the combo. Next batch out April 20th. And if you do have any questions, you can certainly contact me at Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at thesimpit.com, and I'll be sure to do my best to answer your question. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.